1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins might live from his righteousness, by whose stripes ye were. See, the finished work puts your confession either in the present or the past tense. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing is about to happen. God's not getting ready to heal anybody. He has already healed everybody. And when you agree with the fact that it is done and look at it like it's a past thing, it'll manifest. Why? Because now you are in agreement with the head. Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations being used by the power of the Holy Spirit has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. I remember, and I said this to you before, I remember when God showed me, as I was studying this, how Jesus fully fulfilled everything in the old covenant. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, that's why he had to be in the wilderness 40 days. Do you ever wonder why it was 40? And he said to me, the reason Jesus had to be in the wilderness 40 days is because when Moses, under the old covenant, sent the children of Israel out to spy out the land, they spied out the land for 40 days. And when they came back and gave an evil report, are you still here? God said, okay, now for every day you didn't believe and you searched out the land, you will have a year for every day that you searched it out. And when you came back, you gave an evil report and caused the people's hearts to melt. So they wandered 40 years in the wilderness because the spies went out and searched out the land for 40 days and for 40 days walked in unbelief saying we can't do it and came back and told the children of Israel. So Jesus now has to go into the wilderness and fulfill what they didn't do. And for 40 days, he has to believe the word of God. And when Satan comes to him, he has to believe the word of God. He has to fulfill what they broke. And the Bible says, after that, he came out in the power of the Spirit, and he began his ministry. The ministry of what? The ministry of bringing men into the promise. Are you here? So, So when he is on the cross and he says it is finished, he's talking about that old covenant. He's not talking about his earthly, he's not talking about his ministry because the Bible says he goes and preaches to the spirits in prison, 1 Peter 2, 19. He's not talking about his overall ministry because the Bible says we now have a minister in the sanctuary in the heaven. So he's still ministering. So he wasn't talking about his ministry. He was talking about, I finished the covenant. Are you there? Now, according to the revelation of the Apostle Paul, which I just read to you, Colossians 2, when it is fulfilled, it is taken out of the way. Right? I said right? Right? So now, what has changed? Here are the two things that have changed. Number one, the principle of the finished work. If you're taking notes, this is why your faith has shifted. This is why if you mimic what you see in the time of Jesus' ministry, thinking you're in faith, you will not get the results. 
what has changed. The first principle that has changed, and the Lord told me to give this to you just like this. Write this down. The first principle that has changed is the principle of the finished work. The work is now finished. Are you there? The second principle that has changed. See, in the old covenant, those saints that are operating in the old covenant, they were not operating in a finished work. Do you see that? Okay. The second principle that has changed is the principle of the indwelling Christ. The principle of the finished work is the first principle that has changed the covenant and what faith looks like in those two covenants. And the second principle is the principle of the indwelling Christ. Now let's look once more. The principle of the finished work. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11 through 14. Go there right quick. Hebrews chapter, 11, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 11 through 14. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 11 through 14. Now watch this. It says, and every, and every priest stands ministering. Talking about in the old covenant now. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly. Everybody say offering, offering repeatedly. Say it again, repeatedly. repeatedly. Say it again, repeatedly. repeatedly. Now, once again, the, the writer tells us in another place, the reason they do it repeatedly is because the work is never finished. So you've got to do it, 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 you've got to do it again because it can never take away sin. And every priest stand ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down. Sat down. He didn't sit down because he was tired. He sat down because he was finished. Sat down at the right hand of God. Watch this from that time waiting. I'm finished. I'm waiting. No, you missed it. He sat down from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. And his children are in the earth. Sons. The whole creation is groaning, waiting for the sons of God to put their feet on what he defeated. Not keep fighting the battle. Not, not keep fighting the battle. Just put your foot on it. Okay. He sat down waiting. So, so watch this. So, so he sat down waiting until his enemies are made his footstool. Heaven is a stone. Earth is its footstool. We are a part of his body. We're the lower part of the body. As long as we're in the earth. When you, are, when you go to heaven, you graduate into the headship of the body. But here, so our job is to keep putting our feet on what he defeated, not to try to defeat it. Okay, 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 okay. For by one offering, that's his, he perfected means completed made complete all those who are being sanctified. Which doesn't mean just being made holy. You've already been made holy by divine decree. That word sanctified there, hagios, all those who are being separated. See, he has defeated your enemies. Your enemies are still trying to grab hold of you and convince you they are not defeated. And by his word, you sanctify yourself from them lying devils. 
you, you, you sanctify yourself because he defeated them and they're telling you you still have to get sick, still have to stay broke. And Jesus prayed, John 17, sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. Okay. I'm, I'm getting beside myself again. So watch. So watch. He sat down because he was finished. From that time waiting. Waiting for what? I'll tell you what he's, I'll tell you what mostly he's waiting for. He's waiting for us. He's waiting for the body to come into the same covenant the head is in. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Mm. Excuse me. He's waiting for the body to come into the same covenant that the head is in. Because the covenant that the head is in is a covenant that is finished. It's not a covenant where you're trying to get healed. It's a covenant where you are healed. And you are putting your foot on every lying symptom and devil that tells you you're not. It is not a covenant where you're trying to prosper. It is a covenant where you have already been made rich. And you are defying by the word every lying spirit that tells you you won't have enough, will never get out, will never have what you promised. Ah! Woo! Yes, God, I see it. I do see it. I do see it. And let me tell you, when, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, when the appropriate number of sons and daughters on earth come into that covenant, we are getting out of here. We are getting out of here when the appropriate number of sons and daughters are in that new covenant and ministering and living like it and saying that's a lie and that's a lie and that's a lie and that's a lie. I am healed. I am righteous. I am holy. I am prospered. I am a son of the living God. I am. Now I am. And when enough of the church on earth begins to talk like that, God's going to say, son, go get them. Now they look like us. They talk like us. They walk like us. And the world is not worthy of them. Somebody lift your hands and shout about it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit down, I got it. Sit down. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Jesus. Uh, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to finish this today, and I clearly am not going to finish it today. But I have to, by the grace of God, and it'll only take about three minutes. I have to show you this 
because the revelation of it and see the reason see the reason that this is so important is because this is the difference between somebody staying sick and getting up out of a bed this is the difference between somebody praying and wondering why God didn't deliver the person they prayed for and somebody praying and seeing them get up out of a bed this is the difference what I'm talking to you about right now is the difference it's the difference between having a 25 percent success rate and a hundred percent success rate in walking and living by faith are you still here and so many of God's people don't know what I'm teaching you and see I've never heard anybody teach what I've never heard it I got it from the Holy Ghost but I got it because I was doing everything I was told and it wasn't working and it wasn't that the teacher, and see the Lord helped me understand, it wasn't that the teachers who taught us and didn't teach us this part, it wasn't that they didn't know it, they knew it, it just wasn't their assignment to teach it. They had to bring the body piece by piece. See, it's got to be line by line, precept by precept, here a little, there a little. So God only gives them the part that they're supposed to impart, and then when they're done, they go, and somebody else picks up the mantles, Ask, where is the God of apostle so-and-so and prophet so-and-so and pastor so-and-so? Where, where is that God? And God says, I'm here. Now let me show you a little more. Yeah. Wait, maybe you understand. Yeah. So now watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm out of time. But I, I got I to gotta show this to you because now that your spirit is open, you'll understand the shift. And then I'll pick up here next week and just finish a, a little bit so you can see this so so what has happened with the principle of the finished work now that the work is finished and with the principle of the indwelling Christ now that Christ in you is the hope of glory are you there yes. Whew. it's so glorious to me it's so glorious inside of me that I is with, with, with the principle of the finished work and with the principle of the fact that now Christ is in you. Yeah. See, now for you and I to do like the woman with the issue of blood did, or to do like Jairus did, and I'll show you this verse by verse next week. Now for us to say, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. See, now for us to put our healing in the future, it's not faith for us. See, it was faith for her because the work wasn't finished. So she can say, now, if I can do this, I'll be whole. Once I get this done, I'll be prospered. Once I, see, see, they could say that because the work wasn't finished. And when they said it, Jesus looked at them and said, oh, that's faith because of where they were in the finished work. The work isn't finished. So I showed it to you last week, Isaiah 53, Isaiah before talking about healing, He's talk, talking about it before it happens. And he says, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now he's talking about a thing before it happens. And because he is a prophet, he's seeing it done. And the Bible says the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. So he's seeing a thing that is done in the heavens but not done on earth and he says by whose stripes we are before it happens but I showed you when Peter picks up the narrative in 1 Peter 2.24 he's on the other side of the cross and he says who his own self bore our sins put it up 1 Peter 2.24 who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins might live from his righteousness by whose stripes ye were see the finished work puts your confession 
either in the present or the past tense. Nothing is going to happen. Nothing is about to happen. God's not getting ready to heal anybody. He has already healed everybody. And when you agree with the fact that it is done and look at it like it's a past thing, it'll manifest. Why? Because now you are in agreement with the head. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. So for you and I to ever set any manifestation, any victory, any accomplishment in the future is not faith. Are you there? Are you there? And then now, because Christ is in you, play something, I got to go. <laughs> now, because Christ is in you, we'll look at this later. I'm, 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 I'm going to pick it up again next week because I'm not done. And the Lord told me I got to get this done. So I, if, if, I, if, I, if I only have to teach 30 minutes next week and done, I'll, we'll be done. Because I got to get this done. Because I'm responsible for this before the living God who I serve and sent me to you. I'm responsible to make sure you know this. Now watch it. Now because Christ now is in you, you and I, oh God, there's so much word to give you. Now that Christ is in us, when we pray, you and I waiting for God to come by and say something is not faith either. Remember, I, I, I read it to you last week. Woo! That's what, why? Because Christ in you. is now the hope of glory. Oh God. Can, 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 I, can I show you can I show you one? Can I show you something? Put up Colossians 2 real quick. I got so much. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Put up Colossians 1, 24 through 28. Paul's writing says, I now rejoice in my sufferings and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Now he said, this is what I became a minister of. My ministry was to assert this truth. Watch this. Which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations. In other words, God's been working on this for ages and generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Watch it, I'm going off. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ, the anointed one, and the anointing in you, the hope of glory. Hope is the reasonable expectation of good. Glory is the manifestation of the goodness of God. He just said, Christ in you is what is to give you reasonable expectation that the goodness of God will manifest in your life. Now watch this. Notice how I said, watch this. To them God willed to make known which, what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of God. Watch this. Him we preach. Him we preach. Whom do we preach? Christ in you. That's who we preach. No, 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 you missed it. We don't, cre we don't preach Christ in heaven. We preach Christ in you. Now, he is in heaven, but that's not what we preach. We preach him in you. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. We, we, we don't preach the Christ who's coming by to fix your situation. No, we preach Christ in you. We don't preach the God who's getting ready to show up next week. We preach Christ in you. Are you getting it? We don't preach the Jesus who's coming by to see about you and fix it after a while. We preach Christ. 
so watch it. Watch it. I showed this to you last week, and I'll never forget. A few years ago, go to Luke 8, 22, real quick. I'll never forget a few years ago when God was showing this to me. And I, this has been something the Spirit of God has been working in me for over a decade now. It was 2011 when this started to be revealed in me. God wouldn't let me preach it then because he was still showing it to me. And he was still showing me how to work it. Are you still there? I'll never forget when he was read it put it all up 22 through 25 put it up when he was teaching this to me he took me to this passage and he said son I want you to get it he says now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples he's in the boat he's in the vessel and he said to them let us cross over to the other side of the lake and they launched out but as they sailed he fell asleep so the anointed one the anointing was in the vessel but not active. He was in the vessel, but not awake. Watch it. But as they sailed, he goes, and a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water, and were in jeopardy, and they came to him and awoke, saying, Master, Master, we're perishing. He arose, rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a great calm. Watch this. But he said to them, Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Where is yours? This was mine. Where is yours? I did this. You could have done this. You could have done this without waking me. You could have done this because I'm in your vessel. I'm in your vessel. You could have done this. I'm in your boat. You could have done this. Nobody's dying with me on the inside. You could have done this. Stay with me. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody lay your hands on yourself and say, he's in there. Christ in. Watch this. And they, and they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? One translation said, what manner of man is this? It's the new creation man. Watch this. Who can this be? For he commands the winds and even the water obey. And I'll never forget, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, do you understand it? I said, no, sir, I don't think I do. He said, where is that anointing now? I said, it's on the inside of me. He said, so now understand, son, that you are the one who gets down on your knees and cries out to me. But when I answer, I'm going to answer through your voice. Because I'm in you. You are now the one who calls on me. But you are also the one now who has to stand up and rebuke the wind and rebuke the way and tell the devil to leave and tell sickness to loose you and tell addiction to get off your children. You're the one. When I answer, I'm going to speak through you. When I 